To do this, the, the check according to standard in SDC, here you have item standards. So to select the standard, you do the right click, select add, uh, and select any of the standards from the uh, from the list. So this is a list of all implemented standards in SDC. We have plate buckling, members, uh, joint checks, we have Eurocode, different Eurocode we have for members, for welds, for fatigue, bolts, even fire design standard, plate buckling and uh, connection check. But for now we don't have a pressure vessel uh, Eurocode, but this is maybe something we can add together. But what's interesting for us for now is ESME. For ESME we have two codes. This is for boilers and pressure vessels, and we also have ESME code for piping. ESME 8 is interesting for us for now, and we select this code. Now the wizard of the standard appears. This wizard is, uh, so SDC verifier recognizes a lot of information automatically. SDC verifier also uh, uh, reads a lot of information uh, or, re uh, sorry, we read a lot of information from FEMAP and we recognize a lot of information automatically, but we always need a human being engineer to uh, do the calculation and so on. Uh, there, so there is a, a characteristic that should be defined by engineer. So uh, here you have the list of characteristics that engineers should select. If you click on this button, this is what you need to define. Uh, first is material type. For your one material from FEMAP, you need to define the type of this material. And then from a selection, you can select any kind of, of steel. Let's assume it's a carbon steel. Before we have low alloy, we can select carbon, apply to selected carbon steel. So that's simple. We select the, the material that we have. Then we have uh, average allowable stress due to temperature. and. Uh, here uh, in, in SDC verifier, you always have a description. So what is what are you selecting? This is the average value of allowable stress for the material from NX3 in the standard at the highest and lowest temperatures during the operational cycle. So you need to define this uh, average allowable stress. By default, there is a value of 118 megapascals. If that suits you, OK. Like for us in this case, we just press OK. Uh, the next one is modulus of elasticity. The same idea. This modulus is necessary to establish the design uh, fatigue surf. So you can select, define the modulus of elasticity from this. Uh, so in this list, you can define any other or select the one that is set by default. Then you have a tangent modulus of elasticity. Uh, it's the same, but it's evaluated. It depends on temperature, so it's evaluated at the temperature of interest. So here you can set the tangent modulus. And few more last things. First of all is a weld and surface conditions. So um, here we can select that for the full model. What are our welds? Full penetration machined as welded, partial penetration, or do we have a fillet weld? So for, but it's not correct. Uh, to, to define it for a full model, I assume. This is uh, here we need to select the welds that were recognized automatically. So we go here, we select, uh, this is our rule based selector. It goes through the complete program and it helps you to define parts of model to present the result, part of model to define the. Mm, some parameters, parts of model to calculate and so on. So in this case, we can click on all entities and show all, but we need welds. So we go to the rules and select welds from list. Or it's not maybe the best idea. We go to weld, select welds, and I would like to select uh, what if I would do by rule? Yes, I need just, I don't need a list of welds. I need all welds. So I select add. All welds. You can also add here weld intersections, weld tips, and other items, but all welds is good. We select all welds, press OK, and then for all welds, we define the type of welding. So let's say it's going to be full penetration machined weld. We select OK, and then the almost last parameter is defining the quality level. Quality level is here, and by default, it's from one to seven. I'm not that much ever which one we would like to pick in this case, but let's let's select one. And the last is option. Do you want to 
calculate a fatigue penalty factor uh, um, based on SPK or do you want to define fatigue penalty factor? I have this document with information. How do we calculate this? So by default, you can define the value or you can calculate according to the formulas 531, 32 or 33 uh, from FEMAP results. So I don't want to define it by hand. I want to use conservative method of calculating uh, this factor um, from FEMAP. And then the last thing is selection of the model, which we need to use. So here is the same rule based selector as, as I said before. So this is a selection uh, that we will use for calculation. Let's use everything. And uh, we need to check if the material properties are set. So here we see that yield and tensile is not defined for our model. So let's just assume that we have a steel with uh, 355 tensile and 235E6 megapascals yield stress. Uh, yes, so the, the values are defined. We press OK and that's it. What we need to do for calculation. If you would forgot to recognize the welds or you want to check your welds, you have a button here to, to go to weld find, back to weld finder to check your welds. This is the welds that we have had and they are going to be used for calculation. I just close it and I press OK. The standard is created and now we need to preview the result of this standard. So, but first I want to show you the formulas, how the formulas look like. So you click on this item in tree and here is two checks calculation of the coefficients and then the fatigue check. Here you can uh, click on edit and you will see the formulas. You will see how SPK is calculated and what is great in SDC verifier, it is completely open. So you can see the description of every uh, parameter. You can see every formula you can see from where it's taken. So it's formula 530, 531, as I said. Then you have uh, some parameters like stress factor from where it is taken and how it is calculated. And you can see the complete calculation. It ends with some damage. So you can see the some damage or fatigue damage factor depending on what you would like to present. And as I said, the benefit of this is that you can also modify this. You can convert the standard to custom. It won't be called uh, ASME anymore, but it be, will be called my custom rules based on ASME standard. And you can modify it and turn it into EN13445 or something else. So it's very convenient to write your own formulas if you want to change something. So this is the formulas of the standard and if you want to preview results what would you do it's simple you execute a right click here and select let's say criteria plot we select criteria plot we select on which load do we want to run this checks and show it ah, i need to set a fatigue group i forgot this one because check this is a fatigue check so we need to have the amount of cycles and to have the amount of cycles we need to define how many cycles the structure has worked uh, under this loading condition. So I defined the load group, by the, but I didn't define the fatigue group. To do this, I just uh, select from my list of load groups, select the fatigue group. This will be the only one. And I will say that it will be 2 million cycles. I press create. It's a 2 million cycles uh, fatigue group now. So in this case, I execute a right click on fatigue once again and select criteria plot. And what I can do here is select, yeah, fatigue group is selected immediately. All entities, I would like to present some damage and I press to preview. After I do this for the first time, SDC verifier starts to calculate the check. So it, it does the calculation for every load, every combination, and it presents the result in the end. Sorry, it's, um, let me, uh, yeah, so I took the total sum damage. My loads are pretty strange. I didn't uh, do any, yes, so it's a typical model. So I wouldn't say that these results are uh, representative because we have some loads here and loads here. But this is a very rough estimation on how SDC Verifier 
would present these loads. Of course, on your model with millions of finite elements and the fine mesh and the proper loads application with some pressure, as the verifier would present the result uh, with, with a nice plot. But this is the idea of how do we present the results. And we can also present these results with the table. So what I can do here is click on a, with a right click, select table, select, let's say, uh, extreme uh, table, but I want to show it only on, on wells. So I select not all entities, but wells. And here we can select it by rule, for example. So we not by rule, but from list. We select from list, select all 14 wells, press OK, and press fill table. Ah, yeah. As the silver fire will present to you the sum damage utilization factor, which is huge because, yeah, I said 2 million cycles for some uh, specific loads multiplied it with 1.5. So I'm, I'm not pretty sure what uh, are the exact loads that I, I have applied, but this is not a representative results. This is the idea how the software works and how it shows the results. So you can show the uh, result with a table and you can show the result with a plot. And then we press OK. And the last thing I wanted to show you is report. So you select add empty report designer and this is the tool where you can build the report with results of your calculation and here for example is the information that I have uh, filled in on the first uh, stage of creating this project then it brings the table of content preface preface is an important item because it presents what are the um, what is the version of SDC verifier and FEMAP used for this model? What, where is this, where, is it, where it is on your computer? What is the report profile and unit system? And then you can start putting in information. First of all, you can put in uh, the information about the model, like a uh, full chapter, and then it will bring you the materials. What are the materials in your model like this one? It will show you a description of material. And also it will present you where is it in your model. Of course, we have only one material, so it highlights everything. But for properties, it will be different because oh yeah, I have only one property as well. So if I would have multiple different properties, it would present every property. Where is that located? What is the sickness for this property? And so on. So description of loads and constraint and everything else. And then I, I can include the results. So for example, check tables, select ASME standard, uh, fatigue, uh, select the check table on uh, absolute extreme value of some damage or fatigue damage factor on all entities. Press OK. And here is it. We add this. So it adds the structure and in the structure we have static structural calculation, fatigue group one and damage factor. And in the same way I am adding the plot on this result, so fatigue, criteria plot, I select. You can add multiple different views on your model. You can add multiple different directions and selections, but I will just do one, select one, press OK, and include this plot. Of course, once again, these results are close, are, are far away from reality, but this is something, uh, let me show to you the, what I wanted to do, I wanted to, to remove the break page before, set it to no. So here is a very quick and easy one page report on my ASME verification with results of utilization factor and uh, sorry, results of uh, fatigue damage factor and result of overall sum damage, uh, which is highlighted and uh, yeah, and uh, shown on a plot. Then I can go to home page and export this report to Word. And 17 pages, well, this is a lot of description of the model, but 17 items of this report are automatically exported. And here is our report in the uh, Word documents. So after this descriptions and results calculation, it's a six pages report on how the fatigue, fatigue check according to ESME standard is done with the help of SDC verifier. So that's it for the demonstration of ASME Chapter 8 
interface in SDC Verifier. If you have any further questions, I'm more than happy to help you to answer this. Please subscribe to SDC Verifier YouTube channel and also write down in the comments below what features and what functionalities of SDC Verifier you would like to see explained in the following videos.